has never existed. Jesus symbolizes the sun with his 12 disciples, the 12 zodiac signs. All right, let's see it again. The four gospels for the four seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. That's why they have suns on the back of their heads. So stories about Jesus were already in circulation well before the Gospels were written and before four Gospels became authoritative. And the halos don't represent suns. They are iconography borrowed from earlier Greco-Roman iconography, which used them on deities to represent their radiance, their brilliance, their shininess. And when it was borrowed into Christian iconography, it was used for Jesus and those who had special relationships to Jesus, such as the four Gospel authors other saints, certain women. So it has nothing to do with the sun. That's why he's called the light of the world, our risen savior, the son of God. So this argument that this is all about the sun only works in English, a language that would not exist for many centuries after the death of Jesus and the composition of the Gospels. Because sun in reference to a male offspring and sun in reference to the big fiery ball in the sky that hurts your eyes only sound the same in English. They are English homophones. They would not exist in any way, shape, or form whatsoever until many centuries after the Gospels had already been composed. Jesus walking on water, it's the sun. There are absolutely no data whatsoever from the ancient world that support connecting these pieces of imagery the way this creator is. Seven days, seven planets. Christians go to worship their God on Sunday because Jesus is the sun. So while ancient Rome referred to this day as Sunday, the earliest Christians did not. They referred to it as the Lord's Day, which is why in modern Greek it is still Kyriaki or Hikiriaki Himera, which means the Lord's Day. And there are many other languages in which it is referred to as the Lord's Day. Now, it was not lost on the earliest Christians that their Lord's Day was what other people were calling Sunday. And they said, hey, we can worship the light of the world on Sunday. That's no biggie. And so it is incidental that these two things happen to line up. But there are absolutely no data whatsoever that indicate that early Christians intentionally adopted that day because they were worshiping the sun. Christians celebrate the Passover and eat lamb on April. This is because the sun has now passed the winter and hit Aries, which is the lamb. So uh, Aries is the ram, not the lamb, and Christians don't celebrate Passover, they celebrate Easter, which was originally a Christian adaptation of the earlier Jewish Passover, which was celebrated in close connection with the spring equinox and was based on the earlier Jewish lunisolar calendar. Now the signs of the zodiac are also based on the progression of the seasons and the stars, so the connections here are incidental. Now the sun is springing things back into life and bringing back the warmth. Why do you think you say Amen at the end of every prayer? Amen is a sun god from Egypt. Amen is absolutely not a sun god from Egypt. Amun-Ra is a conflation of the creator deity Amun with the sun deity Ra, and it has absolutely no connection whatsoever to the Hebrew root Aman, which means to be firm or steadfast, and is the root from which we get the Hebrew word Amen, which is an affirmation. It means something like surely, which is said at the end of prayers, at the end of doxologies, can even come at the end of curses and other statements. So this connection is 100% made up. Judas stabs Jesus in the back and Jesus falls. So the use of the concept of backstabbing as a figurative reference to betrayal is from around the 19th century. So no, this has absolutely nothing to do with the origins of the Jesus tradition. J for Judas is the constellation Scorpio. And when the sun hits Scorpio, the sun becomes betrayed and has to fall to the winter solstice. So the sun gets betrayed by the J constellation. The letter J did not exist the way we use it today, for instance, at the beginning of the name Judas, until over a thousand years after Jesus was dead. So this is entirely made up. On the 22nd of December, the sun stays the same degree for three days on the Southern Crux constellation, dies on a cross. Then on the 25th, it moves one degree northward, indicating it's bringing back the sun to the northern people, bringing back the warmth of the crops. So the sun is born a virgin on the 25th of December. So these claims just aren't true, but also no one within a thousand years of Jesus's life had ever seen 
this constellation because the precession of the equinoxes kept it below the horizon before, during, and after Jesus's life. It was around 1,500 years later that people noticed it because it had come back above the horizon, and they said, hey, that kind of looks like a cross, and so it was given the different names by which we now know it. The link's in the bio for this PDF. Nah, I'm good.